below is Barclays Center and the borough of Brooklyn, where there's never a dull moment. It's live coverage of the NBA on Monday night. Thank you for joining us. D.A., it's... Well, tremendous athleticism. Thanks, D.A. Here's a look at the schedule for the Magic. On Wednesday, they'll continue the road trip, heading out to Atlanta to take on the Hawks. Then on Friday, they'll head home and take on the Minnesota Timberwolves. And looking at the Blazers matchup, that's a contest that could easily go either way. Small mistakes could be the difference, and both teams will need to be at their best. A look at the Magic starting group. Fultz and Ross pair up to make the backcourt. At the four and the five, we have Gordon and Vucevic. And it's Isaac in at the three. And for Brooklyn, Jared Allen is out there with Jordan. Then there's Spencer Dinwiddie. And it's Kyrie Irving. And it's Durant in at the small forward position. Some guys check the league standings every day. Others try to avoid it. What was your approach when you play? Hey, I didn't look at them much because we were a team that was struggling, Kevin. We were just trying to find our way to being competitive back in the early 80s with the Pacers. But I never got to the point where we were a team that was looking at the standings daily. And I avoided the papers pretty much throughout my career just because, um, to me, was a bit of a waste of energy and time. I had more things to focus on than where we were in the standings and what people might be saying and writing about us. Fultz the pass to Gordon. Isaac kicks to Fultz. Pass to Gordon. Back to Fultz. Just four to shoot. And it's blocked by Jordan. Hey, get that weak stuff out of here. Take it home. Jordan is fantastic at rejecting those kinds of shots. Brooklyn with the ball. They defeated Charlotte in their last game. And that was not an easy game for them. I mean, they barely hung on at the end of regulation before they were able to pull it out in overtime. And it could turn out to be one of their biggest wins of the season. I mean, just because of the way they came through when it mattered most, that's, that's clutch play that could serve them well going forward. Just reliable, guys. He's just always trying to make the right play. Here's Irving. This will blow. His basket is good. So a chance here for a three-point play. You can see there Irving just getting a little tricky with the handles. He has so many ways he can beat you. The Nets shooting their first free throw of the game right now. And you talk about the best defensive head coaches in the league. Steve Clifford has to be on that short list. I would agree with you, partner. I mean, his teams play hard. They play smart. They play with discipline. And um, that usually is a reflection of the coach and a good one. Now, here's Durant. 29 points for him last game against Charlotte. Yeah, but he was also a force on the defensive side. Two block shots and also altered a ton of shots. Orlando, they've gone just one of four to get this game started. Fultz the pass to Ross. And here's Vucevic. Last game he had 13. Poke loose. Durant down. Whoa. What a chance! love the speed that Durant has. I mean, fantastic is slashing into the paint and scoring right at the rim. That length of stride of his and his speed, lethal combination. Now, here's Isaac. Here's Fultz. No good, unable to end this run. Oh, man, you know he'd love to have that one over. Dinwiddie, good, and the assist goes to Irving. And not hard to see why they are giving up points on this run. Just too many good looks from in close. We're about three minutes into this first quarter. Pass to Gordon. Fultz looking around. Shot clock at six. And there's the call. It's on Spencer Dinwiddie. That is his first foul of the game. Brooklyn making some changes. Joe Harris is checked in for Allen. And it's Lavert in for Spencer Dinwiddie. Evan Fournier is checked in for Orlando. Augustine comes in for Fultz. And the quick release of Fournier. Man, he's so good at getting his shot off as soon as the pass reaches his hand. 
And Nikola Vucevic is going to pick up the foul. That's his first foul. And the Nets may get a change here. Prince has checked in. Al Farouk Aminu. He's checked in for Orlando. Harris finds Irving. Back to Harris. It's Jordan on the wing. Brooklyn needs to get off a shot here. From deep three-point range, Harris's shot is off. The Magic trail by seven. And he might not be a household name just yet, but Joe Harris is one of the game's true dead-eye marksmen. You can make the case he's the most underrated shooter in the league. And yes, it's good. And Irving is comfortable running the offense. When a teammate's open, he's quick to whip it around and get him a good look. Ross, that's good. Great pass that time by D.J. Augustine. Maybe not the most famous beard in the league, but Joe Harris's beard last year, Greg, drawing some notice in the NBA. The lumberjack look belying his feathery touch. Good size and strength, enabling him to play the small four position when needed. Now here's Irving. After Torian Prince's miss, hops it up for Jordan. Up high to stuff the alley-oop. Yeah, you got to respect the athletic reach of Jordan now. Throw it up, and he will bash in the alley-oop. The Magic trail by nine. Out to the wing. The wide open look here for Vucevic. And good. Coming in on the assist by DJ Augustine. Augustine's got his third assist on the night. Now, here is Irving. He picked up 15 points in their last win against the Hornets in Charlotte. Oh, phenomenal alley oop slam there. They are taking advantage of a team that looks lost out there. Boy, I tell you what, guys, this is really getting close to being real ugly. Here's Augustine following the basket by DeAndre Jordan. There's 45 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Passes it to Ross. A three. That ball's off target. It's his third miss. He's made two shots from the field. Here's LaVert, and it is flushed down with a nice jam. Really seizing the momentum of this game, but doing it with a methodical approach. And, you know, that involves pounding it inside, getting as many points as you can right at the rim. That demoralizes the team. The shot's good from Fournier. And Fournier has been an absolutely lights-out long-distance shooter. Every season, he's been in the league. And the whistle blows on the backcourt violation. He went over and back. There's 14 seconds left to play in the first. There's the pass to Bamba. Now Ross kicks it to Fournier. With two seconds left, and it's good, two points. Fournier's got eight points. How about the ball handling display by Fournier? I like that run. I do too. No shortage of scoring here at the end of the first quarter. Nets out in front. They're up by five. And we'll be back shortly for the start of the second quarter. One of the league's best point guards, Kyrie Irving, had this to say about his competition. In 2011, I came into a league where the point guard position was still being revolutionized, and now guys are solidifying that spot every single year. There are young guys coming in, but now we have established point guards that are franchise-changing point guards. And for me, having that competitive drive every single game, I know I'm going against an elite point guard every single game. So I think that now coming into the league is a lot different than it was before. Some say, Greg, a golden age at the point guard position. Yeah, and Irving right there with the best of them. Uh, he embraces the challenge. And thanks again for tuning in. If you're just joining us, we've played through one quarter of action so far. And look at what we've seen so far, guys, from the Nets. What do you think? Yeah, in that first period, they look to push in transition at every opportunity. Yeah, I like the way they play. They're looking to get up and down the court every time. Racehorse basketball here tonight. Strap it up. Don't look down. You'll miss something. And now 
let's check out the lineups courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. Here's the second quarter of play, setting the floor for the Nets. On the perimeter, Harris and Prince. Wilson Chandler out there with Jordan. And it's Irving in at the point. And you look out there at the Magic, one of the taller teams in our league. And, you know, that's a philosophical bent for the front office. They want long athletic players, draft guys with great length, and then develop their strength and skill level. And I actually kind of like that approach. Have a philosophy, stick to it, and be true to it. Here's Chandler and the dunk by Chandler. Getting up with power. Got to respect the bounce of Chandler on these throwdowns. And it'll be Orlando with their first time out of the game right here. Their last encounter was in Orlando. Well, if they want to avoid the outcome of that first meeting, they'll need to be stronger on the glass. They were completely outmatched in the last one. And sometimes that can be a motivating factor. May very well light a fire under them tonight. Nobody likes to be dominated on the glass like that. Here's what Brooklyn's going with right now. Jared Allen's checked in for DeAndre Jordan. Kevin Durant comes in for Torian Prince. And Spencer Dinwiddie subbed in for Kyrie Irving. Clock is at three. It's deflected. Well, it's rare to see a blocked shot from a perimeter player like Dinwiddie, but good job that time. Nets leading by nine. Durant deciding where to go with it. Shoots over Isaac. Allen kicks to KD. Then jam down, and he goes right on top of Aaron Gordon. Yeah, the easy hoop assisted by Allen that time. He's developed a nice passing game. The Magic have gone 0-3 and are still looking for that first bucket here in the second quarter. Fournier passes to Isaac. Good ball movement here by the Magic. 13 feet away. The rebound by Wilson Chandler. The Nets have gone 3 of 4 from the floor here in the second quarter. Dinwiddie outside. Off target from outside. The Magic trailed by 11. Guys are looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively for sure. And guys, not sure where his head was on that shot. Not what this offense was designed to create. Not at all. I mean, that's where they want him looking for a teammate, not trying to do it on his own. He needs to share the wealth there. Well, you know, he's still listed at 6'10", but when you see him standing next to teammates, guys, Jonathan Isaac is clearly taller. By the time he's done growing, he's projected to be a 7-footer or north of that. And again, it's the Nets missing. Orlando's gone three of six tonight when they've let it fly from downtown to end the cold streak and he gets the whistle two free throws coming up it goes on Spencer Dinwiddie the Frenchman Fournier always looking to get the shot up but really good at drawing fouls and Isaac doesn't want that seven footer label something we've seen before with the guys like Garnett and, and Kevin Durant. Yeah I agree there are a couple of things that go into that when you talk about guys not wanting to be listed at seven feet. He grew up playing on the perimeter and still has an attachment to that part of his game. And then I think there's also the feeling if you're listed at seven feet you're going to get stuck inside. But even more than that folks tend to look at you differently when you're a seven footer because you appear to be out of the norm in a major way. He's going to put that one in his scrapbook. Insane dunk. And now they're starting to rub it in. Build up a lead, and here we go. Baby, it is showtime. And why not? A little salt in the wound. The more plays they make like that, the more they'll have these guys reeling and on the ropes. Outside Fournier. Stolen by Levert. And here we go. The fast break with Dinwiddie. That's good. And it's Levert with the assist. Dinwiddie's got his second bucket tonight. And a closer look here at the hustle stats for the Nets. They've come out in attack mode on the defensive end. They've applied pressure and forcing turnover. You know, another thing they've done well, guys, this first half is challenge shooters and change shots. A bunch of block shots early. Here's Fultz. Spencer Dinwiddie picking up that last basket. Six on the shot clock. And Durant comes to help. Here's Isaac. And 
Magic working now with the new shot clock. Here's Bamba. That one's in his first bucket of the game. He's one for two. Boy, Bamba really a dogged rebounder despite his slight frame. He's got great length and timing, and his intensity is really impressive. Now here's Durant. Six points for him. Here's Lavert. Here's Allen. Back to Durant. Orlando grabs the miss. They come into this one following the loss to the Mavericks. I mean, they went into that one with the thought that they may have a chance. Uh, no. It wasn't pretty. That's definitely the case. I mean, I know they'd like to scrub that game from their memories and actually erase it from the hard drive. So for the Nets, DeAndre Jordan's checked in for champ. Torian Prince comes in for Kevin Durant. And Irving subbed in for Spencer Dinwiddie. So Orlando going with an almost entirely new group. Vucevic checked in for Mohamed Bamba. Aminu comes in for Gordon. Terrence Ross is checked in for Jonathan Isaac. And DJ Augustine subbed in for Markel Fultz. Now here's Lavert. Prince outside. From deep. Does not score with that shot. It's his second miss against two made shots. Here's Fournier. Had a chance there to cut it to single digits, but it's off target. That's leading by 11. Outside Irving. There's the three. Trains it from beyond the arc. Irving's got his third bucket of the night. I love the three-point shooting of Irving. Excellent at dialing it in from deep, and you've got to respect his range. Vujovic finds Aminu. Fournier, that's for two. And the last second attempt does not go in for him. And so it's Brooklyn sitting with a comfortable lead up by 14. They've been putting on a clinic in the paint. Shots are falling with regularity, and they are pounding it down low. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Kevin, thanks. Here with Coach Clifford. What was the biggest problem for your guys in the first half? Well, you know what? We're a defensive team first, and we've been good defensively. We've been organized. We weren't that in that first half, and that's what we got to concentrate on. Okay, David, much appreciated. And now time for halftime, so we'll be back in just a bit to get the third quarter underway. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey again, everybody. So far, pretty uh, lop. Brooklyn found themselves in a close game in the first. At the end of one, they were able to end up with a five-point lead. The second quarter got a lot more exciting for them as they were putting up big numbers and find themselves way out in front here at the half. And from what we saw so far from the Nets, Kenny, what's your takeaway? We saw what you already know. Kyrie's an outstanding scorer. But lately, he's also taken a lot of pride in his defense, made a great impact on the glass. He's competing in every phase of the game. Now. Check, what'd you think about Orlando? Well, they're obviously facing a hot shooting team tonight. That combined with a lackluster effort on defense, recipe for disaster. Without major improvements defensively, this game is O-V-A, over. And that'll about do it as we get ready for the second. With a big gap on the scoreboard, the second half begins with very different goals for these teams. One side trying to mount a comeback, one side trying to protect their lead. Nice game, great performance by Evan Fournier. Man, he's been running wild on them through that first half. Absolute dynamite on offense. And you know what? I'll be interested to see just how much he's got left in the tank. That first half had to take a lot out of. Tipping off the second half, here's Steve Clifford's five. At the four and the five, we have Gordon and Vucevic. Fultz and Ross pair up to make the backboard. And it's Isaac in at the three, the small forward. It's a plus five advantage for them in rebounding after that one. And keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to David Aldrin. Well, Kevin, one of the things that teams are more aware of in the age of analytics is the importance of sleep. Those teams are making adjustments. Morning shoot-arounds have been moved in some cases to the afternoon or eliminated altogether. Here 
there are many fewer teams that are taking red-eye flights across country. Some teams even give players orange-tinted glasses to encourage them to sleep. There's a lot of work to be done in this field, but the direction is clear. Continuing to evolve. All right, David, thank you. Clark, I'm going to get a little detailed here, but in terms of footwork in the post, who really impresses you? Well, there are a number of guys, Kevin. I mean, you think about it. Kevin Durant is a lethal scorer and does a lot of his work off the dribble and in transition on pull-up threes, but when he is a post-up threat and he does get posted sometimes, his footwork is superb, absolutely superb. Joel Embiid comes to mind, big fella with feet of a ballerina. Jokic does a great job with his feet, not nearly as athletic as MB or Durant. And then I would put um, Kawhi Leonard outside of a big guy. I mean, he's not a big guy in terms of position, but boy, he uh, is very efficient down in the low post when he gets it there. Good name. Now here's Ross. Looking at his numbers, he's averaging about uh, six and a half points a game. Now, here's Fultz, guarded by KD. That's one for their first four to start the second half. At the elbow, it's Allen. Right side, Jordan. Back to Allen. Nice ball movement by Brooklyn. And now Isaac running the floor all by himself. Yeah, those long strides of Isaacs, they allow him to get behind the defense and gobble up a lot of ground in the open court. Durant down low. He's covered by Isaac. Ross with the steal. And now the fast break. Ross with the ball. That's good from Fultz on the assist from Ross. Fultz has got his first bucket of the night. Ross has earned his reputation as a team first guy. Excellent at distributing the ball. Nets leading by 14. Outside, KD. Three-pointer. Irving looking over the floor inside short the kick out to Irving over Fultz Irving's shot is good Irving's got 11 points that makes three in a row to start the second half now here's Fultz he's covered by Irving that's tipped Here's Vucevic, uses the glass to finish the layup. Vucevic has got his second bucket. Comfortable operating near the basket. Vucevic has size plus touch. That's a nice recipe for scoring in multiple ways. Ross against Dinwiddie. And there's the call. It's on Spencer Dinwiddie. That's his third foul of the game. Some changes for Brooklyn. Chandler comes in for Jared Allen. And Joe Harris is subbed in for Irving. So Orlando going with an almost entirely new group here. Ahmed Bamba, he's checked in for Vucevic. Aminu comes in for Gordon. Fournier is checked in for Isaac. And DJ Augustine subbed in for Ross. And Brooklyn has possession following the bucket by Orlando. Here's Fultz. Rebound, Brooklyn. Jordan's got six rebounds now in the game. You know what? He's just stone cold right now. Really not sure if he's their best option offensively as they try to get back in this game. Now here's Dinwiddie. Taking a look at his numbers, he averages about seven points a game. Stolen by Bamba. And here we go with the Magic fast break. Ball's knocked loose. The shot's good from Fournier. Yeah, you know, guys, Fournier is a hard matchup in assignment defensively because he's always in motion and does a good job scrapping for rebounds, too. Harris against Aminu. Pass to Chandler. Shoots from the elbow. Here's Jordan. And the layup is good after a nice lead pass. Jordan's got eight points. Well, he's cooking with grease. He's got things flaming up, looking for an opportunity every time down the floor when he's that hot. Bamba kicks to Aminu. There's 53 seconds left to play in the third. Just five on the clock. Launches it. Jordan with the rebound. Jordan's got his seventh rebound here tonight. 
the jam by Kevin Durant. Man, he gets it done in bunches, does Durant. He's a superb scorer. He's just got to marvel at his greatness. The Magic trail by 14. Augustine looking around. 27 seconds left in the third. To the paint. Here's Aminu. The basket is good. The assist from Augustine. Augustine's got five assists in the game. Dinwiddie finds Chandler. Here's the three. Jordan the pass to Durant. And contact on the shot. So he'll be shooting free throws here. It goes on Muhammad Bamba. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's hard to avoid fouling Durant, but the problem is he hits nearly 90% of his free throws for his career. Making it look effortless. Send this guy to the stripe. He's going to cash in more than not. And here at the end of the third quarter, it's a double-digit ball game. Nets lead by 14. We're going to step aside for just a second, but join us right back here for the start of the fourth quarter next. As we head into the fourth, we'll see if there's a comeback in the works or if it's more of the same from the first three quarters. And so it's Dinwiddie who brings up the ball for Brooklyn. They led by as many as 18 points. Dinwiddie runs the point with Levert flanking him. Torian Prince is out there with Harris. And it's KD in at the center, locking down the middle. So that's the lineup for Brooklyn. Boy, set up nicely there. Dinwiddie plays well without the ball. He's not just a point guard, fellas. Left side, Fournier. The basket good off the assist from Fultz. Fultz has got three assists tonight. The ball distribution was there. I mean, outstanding work all the way around. KD dishes to Prince. It's good. They're yeah, taking it right into the teeth of the defense, and, and it's a defense that's starting to look frustrated. Well, they should be. I mean, it has not been a good performance for them at that end of the floor. Jared Allen's checked in for the Nets. Irving comes in for Spencer Dinwiddie, then for the Magic. Vucevic comes in for Mohamed Bamba, and it's Ross in for Markel Fultz, and it's good for two. Harris has got his first two points. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. Well, listless and lifeless at the defensive end. I mean, especially inside. They've really got to pick up that interior defense. Now here's Ross. And it's Vucevic missing. And they've got a big lead, not just on the scoreboard, but really in the rebounding numbers as well. And what I like about it, Greg, it's been a physical brand of basketball. It's had a little sandpaper element to it. Gritty and, and rough. But that's how you win games. And they're forcing the ball inside, and it's working like a charm. So for the Magic, Aaron Gordon, he's checking in for Aminu. And Isaac subbed in for Augustine. And guys, let's get your take on the scoring breakdown for the Nets. Fantastic passing. We saw it in the first half, and it's carried over here in the second. They've also been pounding it inside tonight and coming away with a lot of points in the paint. I call those PIPs. Now here's Ross. And the call will be against Karis LeVert. That's his first foul. We hear a lot about the young basketball players in this country, the good ones playing in the AAU system. Is that the best way to develop talent for the NBA? It's one of the better ways because the competition level is quite good across regions and throughout the country with these AAU teams. I think there's some great AAU programs and some tremendous benefits to participating in AAU basketball. Some things are better than others with it, but overall, I think it's pretty solid. Prince misses. That is some tough defense there against one of the better finishers in our game. Now, here's Fultz. He's tightly guarded. Pass to Ross. Six to shoot. Here's Vucevic. Whistle blows. Bucket is good. And he'll have a chance at the line to make it a three-point play. And, and, guys, I like what they're doing here. 
in the second half getting a lot of production in the paint and, and still trailing but but starting to show some grit down low DeAndre Jordan's checked in for Harris Clark you look at the defensive metrics for Nikola Vucevic lately very good and yet he's been considered a liability at that end so in your opinion which is it? yeah you know Kevin I think it's a blend quite honestly the analytics say one thing but in this day and age the way the game is played big centers are typically challenged from a mobility standpoint especially trying to defend fleet footed perimeter guys in pick and roll situations and in space to Vucevic's credit he's worked hard at becoming better trying to be a better rim protector and recognize where he needs to be early on with anticipation so he's making progress but it's a blend in my mind. Hands with the ball out of bounds Jordan touched it last. Just five to shoot. A three. And since halftime, he just doesn't have a clue when it comes to shooting. Just a solid performance on the interior. The rebounding has been off the charts. Yeah, you look across the board, it's actually sizing up, shaping up to be a great game. I mean, strong performances throughout, and they've really been strong on the glass. Now here's Irving. Here's Isaac, and two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the content. Hey, guys, imagine trying to stop that coming at you. 6'10", athletic, quick, strong. Isaac is a difficult matchup. Kevin Durant's checked in for the Nets. Spencer Dinwiddie comes in for Karis LeVert. Irving with the ball, guarded by Fultz. Irving drives in, and DeAndre Jordan throws it down. Absolutely the prettiest play in basketball executed to perfection. I don't think you'd get an argument there. Everybody loves the alley-oop. Unless you're the team getting punched on. That would be the difference. And now the presentation of our Jordan player of the game, Kyrie Irving. And in terms of his shooting, this has been one of the more accurate performances you'll ever see. I mean, he's been in constant motion, creating a lot of good looks for himself. But, but still, even when you're wide open, you expect to miss some of the time. That has not been the case here tonight. This guy has made everything. What a connection he has to these fans. They love him here. And the more he has games like this, the deeper that connection gets. Here's Fultz following the basket by DeAndre Jordan. Passes it to Ross. Right wing. Here's Isaac. Nailed from three-point land. Isaac's got five points now in the quarter. Well, you know what? I think you've got to have that shot in your game, even if you are a big guy now. And Isaac demonstrating that he does have that in his game. And that is a textbook example of how to defend your rim. And you know, guys, I love his fight and grit on the interior. I mean, he never lets a shot go uncontested. No good from Irving. The Magic trail by 16. And hey guys, what we saw here tonight is one side having everything going for them. Huge margin of victory for the Nets. This was a physical, physical game. Yeah, I mean, they were aware of the rotations defensively and were able to attack the rim. And so checking out their season record, this game will become their 45th win. And once the horn sounds, they're going to go up 2-0 in the season series. But Greg, still two more games upcoming between these teams, so we could have a few more twists and turns down the road. And you know, when you look at the huge impact he had, just a monster game for Kyrie Irving. Boy, the way he orchestrated the pace was impressive. I mean, moved the ball around, made good things happen with the pass. Well done. Yeah, not a perfectly set screen there, but got him just enough room to get that shot off. You know, for a team like the Nets, building without top picks, player development becomes critical. I mean, the Nets have made that a key focus for their franchise, and you can see the results paying dividends now. Now, here's Dinwiddie. Fires the three. And Bamba pulls it down. Here's Fultz. And finished off by Fultz. Look, 
it's always great to get into a rhythm, but do it when it matters. Now they're playing with urgency, huh? They could have done it much earlier before the game was out of reach. Here's Dinwiddie. From past the arc, here's Karuch. And out of bounds as the Magic will gain possession. I'm not sure whose fault that was, guys, but they need to get on the same page here. Two seconds separating the shot clock and game clock. Now the pass to Isaac from deep. DeAndre Jordan grabs the miss. Left side, KD can't hit from in close. Here's Fultz. And it's sent back by Allen. Don't challenge him. Get that out of here. Allen's almost seven feet now. He's got excellent timing and good bounce. And so it's Brooklyn easily grabbing this one. Even early on in this one, it seemed like they were happy to be playing at home tonight. And it makes a big difference. Once they started to really play in rhythm, you never felt like they had any doubts as to whether or not they were going to win. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge, standing by courtside. David. Thanks very much. Kyrie, big numbers for you tonight. And I always wonder what it's like to be in a zone like that offensively. It was amazing. Uh, you know, more importantly, we got the win, and I couldn't have done it without my Thank you, David. Great interview once again. Well, folks, that's going to do it for now. For Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching the NBA on 2K Sports. We'll see you next time. Have a great evening.